Okay, students, in this video, we're going to look at how to make a very simple level sequence or cinematic for your game. Uh, for this video, we're just going to be looking at having a camera that flies around a space uh, that later we can record out to video or that can be used to like autoplay when a level starts. So uh, one thing I did before getting started here is I went to window load layout and set to default editor layout, uh, which set up some basic window viewports for me. And I'm also going to open the content drawer and choose dock. And I'll get to why in a second, but we're going to be using a number of things and we want to have them in certain places. Next, I'm going to go to my cinematics drop down here at the top of the page and choose add level sequence. Uh, now, it's going to want us to name this, so I'm going to call this uh, castle level sequence. But you should always name it in some way that it uh, describes what you're doing it and what level it's in. I'm also going to put one on here because on the off chance, maybe I want to record a couple different options. Uh, and I'm going to be in my uh, root content folder here so I can find it easily. This is where like we keep our levels as well. So here I have castle level sequence one. I'm going to hit save. And then by default, it is opening the sequencer window for me. Now the sequencer window is also here. You can go to window cinematics sequencer. And this is another pop-up window. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button here and it creates a new camera and sets it as the current camera cut. And this does two things immediately. Um, it puts a camera in my scene. Uh, it creates a camera cuts here on the track. It actually also changes uh, my viewport to be piloting this camera uh, that we can see, which we will come back to that in a second. Uh, I'm also going to grab the sequencer tab here. And I'm just going to drag it down to the content browser. That's where I like to have it, which is at the bottom of the screen, so that I can see what I'm doing and still select stuff, but move the timeline. Uh, I'm going to suggest for most videos that we increase our number of frames. So right now, it looks like I have uh, 150 by default. Um, it's showing 260 here. I'm going to type 500. And uh, our defaults here have it as 30 FPS, or 30 frames per second. So that means that uh, with 500 frames, it's a little over 16 seconds, which would be a lot for something like uh, 3D Studio Max to render, but here it will actually still render pretty quickly. Now I'm dragging out my camera cuts track so that it captures the camera through all 50 frames. And I'm also going to drag out uh, this red bar here, which is basically the, the, um, like the track selection, because I want it to select the whole thing. Uh, and you can see right now I can grab our little red uh, timeline controller, and as I drag it back and forth, nothing is happening because we haven't recorded any movement or anything yet. I'm still going to do some other setup. First, I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to uh, go to, let's see here, Viewports, and I'm going to turn on a second viewport. So this gives me two viewports here, and I'm going to actually try to drag this so that it splits half and half. Um, interestingly, this def viewport is already defaulting to what I want it to, and this one, I kind of want to go back to what it shouldn't be. So I'm going to uncheck here, allow semantic control, and uh, I'm going to uncheck this pilot. The upper left button there uh, gets me out of piloting mode, which we will talk about in a second, because I want my left viewport to just be the one that lets me see my world and see things happening, and my right viewport here uh, if yours doesn't look like mine, you want to, uh, in the upper left here, choose Allow Cinematic Control and also Game View, which the hotkey is G, so that hides all of our little selection objects and everything. And also on the Perspective dropdown here, we want to make sure it is on Cinematic Viewport. So the one on the left here we can see is a default viewport. We want Cinematic Viewport which gives us this uh, film-like look, and it also gives us the play button and a bunch of other details. 
Uh, and on the right side here, I get a bunch of cool overlays that I can use. So I'm gonna turn on action safe and title safe, which are some outlines here telling me to sort of stay within uh, certain things when I'm framing my camera. And I might even turn on custom safe so I get three here. Um, if you want, you can have a center crosshair to help aim you at things. There's also a grid if you want to think about your rules of three um, or other situations. And then uh, I'm going to, uh, again on the perspective here, I have Cine Camera Actor, which is listed here as my place cameras. And if I click it, I will be piloting the camera. You can see here it says Pilot Active Cine Camera Actor. And what this means is if I move around in this viewport, my camera is physically moving in the space. Um, and if you watch here on my left viewport, you can actually see the camera fly by as I'm being the director. Now, one thing you may notice is, is that it seems like I'm quite far away in terms of where my camera is from the castle, and yet it is filling my viewport here. Now, that has to do with the Cine camera uh, lens settings. So here we have all sorts of lens settings that we can control the focal length, uh, our f-stop, our aperture, and all the other things uh, like it's a real camera. In fact, there are presets for real cameras in here, uh, including zoom lenses um, and sort of like default cameras of different sorts and lengths. Uh, you can choose the one that you think works best. I'm going to either use a 12 millimeter or a 30 millimeter camera here. I think I might go for 12 for this project. But um, any of these things are you know, fair game. And then we're going to look in our sequencer tab down here at the bottom and scroll down so we're on our Cine Camera Actor track. And you can see we have a number of tracks here that we can set. We have our aperture, our focal length, our distance, and then the important one here, our transform. And the buttons here in the middle uh, let us add keyframes. So right now I'm at zero, zero on my timeline, and I've sort of lined up my framing of the castle, and perhaps I want to sort of be a little more off to the side here to try to do something where I come in and turn, and I'm going to click this center button on the transform, and it creates a keyframe for me here. And then I'm going to drag along my timeline, and so this is 30 seconds, and I'm gonna move however much I want to move in the first second. And so I'm going to move a little bit forward using WASD and holding right click on my mouse, and I'm also going to aim the camera somewhere else. And then I'm going to click the keyframe again. And as we drag our uh, piece here, you can see that it figured out what it wants to do in the middle. Not only did it move my camera's location, but it also moved my target and where I'm looking at. And next I'm gonna maybe drag a bunch so we go like to 150, so I have, I don't know, something like four seconds more. Uh, and then I'm going to move far closer here uh, as we get to our scene. And I'm gonna to aim to go through my door because I think it'll be cool. And then I'm going to put another key. And as we look here, we can see the movement in our camera as we go. Notice it did not stay perfectly targeted the whole way. It moved its target to sort of where I was at the finish. And so I could come in and make some changes to that and change its rotation at different points by adding other keyframes. I can also see in the world the path that my camera is taking. Now, next, I'm going to do maybe another second and have it come in and turn and look at my little blacksmith area and set another keyframe. And then I kind of want to fly up, but when doing that, you have to be really careful with how you're doing your rotation because um, if I do like a big movement, it's going to find the shortest distance between uh, what I'm doing. So, for example, if I move to, let's say, 270 now, and I'm gonna look down and fly up. And sort of set it looking here. And if I set a keyframe and then we sort of scrub between them, we might see some very weird camera moves. So you can see here, this camera move did a full 
360 spin to get where I wanted it to be. Now, maybe this you find this cool. It will potentially maybe give someone a little bit of whiplash, especially if we hit play and watch it at speed. It's quite fast. Um, so if you dislike, you can just grab a keyframe as is. And not only can we sort of drag it in time, but I can also just hit delete on my keyboard and get rid of it. So this time, I'm going to uh, make an effort to just grab my existing location here, and I'm just going to pull the Z up. So it's like I'm flying upwards. Uh, and I'm going to set that as a keyframe with perhaps just a little bit if I rotate on the Z uh, this way. So I have a little more fine control using the numbers. And if we scrub back through this, we can see it's a much simpler rotation. I'm seeing the bridge. I'm seeing the flag. I'm going to scrub a little bit more, try to back up and get a wide shot here, like I'm going to spin around it. Um, that may have been too big of a motion for it to look good. Let's see how it works. That's kind of OK. Always check your keyframes. Uh, I'm going to rotate here. Um, one thing you just noticed there is that I didn't move my keyframe slider first as far as I wanted it to go. So when I moved it again, it flew me back to where I would be. Uh, and then I'm going to go a little bit more here. Try to get another shot of my castle from this side. Keyframe, let's scrub between them. Kind of looks okay. It's a little bouncy. Could be smoother. Um, and then in the end here, I'm going to drag all the way to the end and try to get sort of my nice sunset here uh, and the mountain in the distance. And we'll finish on this shot here. Um, it's helpful to consider also your lighting in this. It's probably not my best move to finish in the shadow staring into the sun. Um, but it's that's the sign of good composition is sort of pre-thinking these things. Um, you can also you notice here I've sort of finished uh, at this shot, but maybe I want it to be a little bit wider of a shot. I can uh, come here and maybe at the 450 I'm going to hit a focal length uh, keyframe, and then as I drag to the end here I'm going to grab and I can grab it right here on the timeline my focal length uh, and change it the zoom it's apparently not letting me change oh this one doesn't let me change the focal length because i chose a uh, camera that uh has a specific locked focal length but on some of the other ones you can um if you choose like the default zoom lens you can uh have it change its focal length or focus uh along the uh the timeline as well so it would zoom out uh, and then the last great thing, first of all, we can like watch this from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play and watch our little video here as we have a fly through of our level. And then much like a blueprint, your individual sequence that you have here has a save button. So I'm going to save the sequence. And then the fourth button over here has the button for render this to a video. So uh, up here, we have some default options. We're going to render to AVIs. Uh, we have this, this section here for audio output format. Uh, I would leave it as no audio for now because it, it outputs the audio as a separate wave file that we'd have to recombine. And we haven't really done audio for this project. Um, we have here a resolution for our video. Um, I'm going to suggest we render at 1080p because that is what we're capturing at. Uh, and then it has uh, compression, which we do want, um, which will make the video smaller. And we'll reduce quality a little bit, but make it take less space on our computer. And then we can leave this for now. It's just going to name the file uh, and put it in our project in the video captures slash saves folder. And then I'm going to click capture movie. Uh, it's going to want me to save my level. I'm going to say yes. And you can't see this, it's on a different monitor, I'll try to drag it over, but you should get a little window that shows you about a quarter of the screen as the computer captures this in real time. 
So you will watch it go through in real time, which will take the 16 or so seconds of it capturing your video. Uh, and then it will do its compression for a little while. So it'll seem like it's finished, but in the lower right-hand corner, it'll still say capturing video. So during that time, just sort of sit tight, let the computer do its thing. Uh, and when it's finished, you should have a great AVI file. Uh, and you can open the folder just by clicking. So here, this is one I did earlier, and this is the one I just did. And if I double click it to look at it, uh, again, it opened on another screen. But here is my finished video as a rendered AVI file uh, that in quite good quality shows off the work that I've done um, in my scene. Uh, and if we look, it's only about 100 megabytes, which is pretty standard. Uh, if you were using this in a video game, you can actually then get out of this mode and um, find the level sequence object. And you can tell it to autoplay at the start of the game. So uh, if it's not on autoplay, and I, for example, uh, choose to play in the viewport, apparently I am slightly below the world. So let me move player start up. Um, at the moment, if I hit play, uh, I spawn into the game. But if I select my Cine camera actor level sequence, actually, I want the actual level sequence, the little uh, film starter, and I choose autoplay. When I hit play, it will actually play that viewport. And you can see my character that spawned in there. And it will go by and show all the details. And this is probably a little long to be an intro video, but when it finishes, it will then take me back to my character like it's showing off the level and doing an intro for me.